We talk about this and talk about that. Shut up, stop running out, let's talk about facts. Live a little, laugh a lot, let's have some fun. Listen to Gina, she'll tell you how it's done. Did you know? Good to know. What did you know? Well, now you know. Never know what's gonna happen on the No Filter Show. Loud and proud, funny and cool. Say what you're thinking, that's her only rule. Be the change. Be the change. Come watch the No Filter Show. No Filter is brought to you by Oasis Shopping Bahamas. Online shopping made easy. Welcome to the No Filter Show, everybody. Thanks for watching. Today we have two special guests, Rondi Trico from our Head Nodes admin team, as well as Beyond Ferguson, brother of the pilot Byron Ferguson that went down almost six months ago. Stay tuned. It's going to be very interesting. No Filter is brought to you by Oasis Shopping Bahamas. Bank of the Bahamas, Quality Home Center, Dairy Queen, Chef Boyardee, Boss, BAF Financial and Insurance, Checkers Cafe, Doctors Hospital, Marathon Vet Clinic, Mesa Grill, Live to Fish, Lowe's Pharmacy, Riley Boys Auto and Car Rental, Ultra Games, and The Pediatric Place. This segment is brought to you by Bank of the Bahamas, the Bank of Solutions. Welcome back to No Filter, everybody. Um, right now, this segment, I'm here with a friend of mine who has become my friend over an unfortunate incident. He's the brother of Byron Ferguson, the pilot that went down almost six months ago. His name is Bjorn Ferguson. Uh, Bjorn, welcome. Thank you, Gina. How are you doing? I'm good. How have things been with you? Yeah, right there. Um, <clears throat> not good. I was going to say, not all butterflies not are all flowers. Not all butterflies, but, you know, here, yeah, just making it. So, I, you know, this would be uh, one of my first shows, and I wanted to, it's very important for me to have you here because of the fact that no one has actually had seen us two have a conversation, you know, me with one of the family members, and I think it's just been all these separate interviews, so I thought it'd be nice um, to bring you on and let's get an update as well as, but I want to start with you letting everybody know because, m you know, my show is going to be worldwide, you know, not just in this other country. We want the world to know. Um, I want to keep uh, Byron's name alive. I want the story to stay alive. I don't want him to be forgotten. I want everybody to know exactly what happened and what are we going to do so this doesn't happen again. So if you could start off with letting the world know exactly. Tell me what happened on the night when you got the phone call. <clears throat> well, when I got the call, my mom, she contacted me and, you know, she told uh, me that she has some information that Byron went down. Um, I immediately got in my vehicle, went to my brother, I collected him, Ashton, and I went and I collected my mom and we went to the location, which was Nirvana Beach. Which was a half a mile off. Yeah, yeah, about a half a mile from the shore. The shore. Um, when we got there, saw the emergency vehicles, um, went down to the shore. Um, you know, now it's fence, so we, st we, we were standing at the fence, but we could see that the defense force and other Bajra, I think, other vessels, they were there, and they were in a particular formation, you know. In the ocean. In the ocean. Uh -huh. <clears throat> so it was obvious they came across something, how they were positioned. It was obvious uh -huh. that, you know, they had something in their view. 
and obviously there was the Coast Guard helicopter. It was overhead. They were shining a light, their big floodlight, in that particular location. Right. No one spoke to us. Um, I went personally, spoke to a police officer, indicated to him that the possibility existed that that could be my loved one, my brother. Um, that was the extent of it. I gave them his name at that point, and that was the only interaction we had with any persons in authority. So no one, <clears throat> after indicating to them that, listen, it's possible that that's my loved one, you know, my brother was with me, N nothing further, absolutely nothing further. And you know, like a don't care attitude. Yeah, yeah, like just we're handling this. Yeah, nothing, nothing. This high hand arrogance. And just to let uh, everybody know, you're a lawyer, I so am. you know protocol. Absolutely. You know how to act. You ain't going there. And, not listen. And, and no, and like Gina, you know, no one is looking for no special treatment. Right. No, no, no one looking for no special treatment. But I think that. Agencies should be aware of their roles and how to interact with members of the public, especially in situations like that. Correct. You know, um, it's a little bit of empathy would be absolutely. nice. Absolutely. And, you know, I'm aware, and I'm pretty sure they're aware, that as it relates to aviation and maritime matters, there are protocols that must be followed and complied with. Correct. Because we are parties to international agreements. And also there are there there is local laws that govern how these things are supposed to play out. Are you saying you know this? Absolutely. So what type of plane was he flying? He was in a Piper Aztec. <coughs> okay, what is that? Well, it's a small plane, um, five seater. Five seater. Um, that he you know, once he's home he usually uses and back and forth from the United States. And how long has he been flying? What's his t all, tell me his all background? His life. Um, from my brother, from I knew him, he was fascinated with planes and the air. And my parents, they, you know, they obviously indicated passion. to him, listen, that's what I wanted to do. And they made every opportunity available for him to fly. So he wasn't no, uh, I just learning no, this. No, 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 no. He um, knew what he was doing. Absolutely. Professional pilot. And when your mom got the call to say that I think that uh, Byron went down, how did they think there was him? Well, like I said, we, we, we have a family group, and Byron, we have the, I think, the tracking software that he passes on to the family on his flights. You know, we, we, we could watch the flights. Wow, he's pretty in. responsible, yeah, saying, okay, I'm, going up now. Yeah, I should, be, I should be down in about an hour, 30 minutes, you know, you could right. watch. And then, you know, obviously on that evening, you check, there's no signs of the flight, so all of that. You wow, know, we knew something, something went wrong. Mm -hmm. um, so obviously, you know, my mom, she is, well, everyone is distraught, but my mom, you know, she is all freaked out. Um, his wife, Anya. Yeah, because he was just married. Just married. You Only know, a year? A year, one year. He know, has a young son. Young child. Beautiful. Oh, my. If you all see this, I, I'm going to show you some pictures. She is Beautiful distraught. Boy. He has and a daughter, Sapphire. Sapphire, yeah. Um, so everybody is just, you know, freaked out, anxious, just trying to get answers, what's happening. But at the so, same time, recognizing that, you know, yeah, the authority is out there and hoping that they're doing what they need to do and should be doing to right. rescue or find, find them. Exactly. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> we're going to take a break. When we come back, we'll start the story about how I ended up getting involved with the family and what brought us together. and. Um, what people basically what who should have been doing wasn't doing so then we had to step up and come and help this family out all right we'll be right back come on into the quality home center you will see the savings from when you enter your one-stop department store with so much niceness friendly staff great atmosphere low prices they got Brand name appliances, furniture, hardware, electronics, home decor, toys and apparel, shop and save. There's no need to go away. Stay at home and save big. Stop and shop at the quality home center. Home center, spend less and live better. 
healing by use of hyperbaric oxygen. The body is exposed to 100% oxygen. In some cases, speed the healing process. Chemotherapy patients with burns from radiation that won't heal. Diabetic patients with sores that won't heal. Insurance pays for 18 different diagnoses or illnesses. A HBOT session time can take as little as 45 minutes. Doctors Hospital, trusted and best care now. Isn't your health worth it? This segment is brought to you by Quality Home Center. Spend less, live better. Hi, welcome back to No Filter Show. I'm here with Bjorn Ferguson, brother of Byron Ferguson, the pilot that went down uh, only a half a mile off of shore of, of the mainland Nassau. And um, we're now gonna just wanna talk about, because I was highly involved in this case, and what happened was, as I mentioned earlier, friend of mine, Rondi, came to me. I own a boat. My husband is like the Tarzan of the sea. They asked us, hey, can you all go out and possibly look for this plane? And she gave us a background, and I was like, what plane? Because I was actually off the island, and she said, a friend of mine, and he said, he's an expert pilot, I'm telling you, and because they had all these rumors of, oh, you know, this dude was a drug dealer and all this, trying to ruin his name, until yep. I got to know this family, and I was like, okay, impossible. And the uh, gentleman sitting next to me, believe it or not, I've never met him the first time. So we went out, got a team together the next day. I had uh, 15 volunteers who knew how to scuba dive, snorkel, swim, and along with my husband. And my husband said, you need to come on the boat as well because when the police comes, someone's going to have to deal with them. And I was like, because I, I, I can't scuba dive. So um, anyway, we went out, and would you believe in 20 minutes, of searching the ocean. 20 minutes, we found plane, pieces of the plane. I then called, did I call you or I called your mom? I think you called me. Um, yeah, I think I spoke with you. Yeah. And that was the first time we actually ever spoke, yeah. ever. And I said, uh, I just wanna let you know, and it was really scary. I said, we, I, I, how, how am I supposed to tell this family that, so we found the plane in which your brother went down in and and it was quite visible and everything was there. And I mean, it was pretty scary because the diver went down, they came up and they said, we found a plane. And I sat there and I said, there is no way. We were out here for 20 minutes. And after searching for a little while, because we said, get everything you can find. It was amazing because we heard the stories that they said there was no flight plan. And I mean, I always said that God has a serious sense of humor because sitting to the bottom of the ocean came up in perfect form, the flight plans and all the paperwork. And it was crazy. And uh, so I called you and you met to the dock and it was very, very emotional. Yep. And um, how did you feel at that point? I mean, <laughs> just, I really had a meltdown, you know. Um, how we got asking for the public's assistance was we didn't see any activity from the authorities. You know, they keep indicating to us that they're out there, they're out there. But the location where the plane was found on that night, or the location where the plane came down, no one was there, you know. Then they called it off at, like, after 11 on the 8th. They were supposed to return the following morning. We didn't see them. Um, they came later on in the morning with one or two pieces of resources. And it just wasn't an aggressive attempt to locate and secure the plane. And so we reached out, and that's how we got, I guess, you know, to you. And, and it was crazy, because when we went out there, there was no perimeter marked off. Absolutely not, not a boat nothing, in sight. Nothing. I was ready. I had my guard up, and I was ready for when we go out there. If any problems, we look at this plane. Yes. Um, and I knew that my husband, I mean, that night he said, this is where the plane landed. This is how the tides work. This is where the edge is. And he was like, so we starting from here. Boom, boom, boom. Everybody went off the boat in teams of two. And he said, I'm telling you, it's between here and here and went over the ledge. Yeah. And we went there. I, I'm telling you, I couldn't believe it. So uh, came to the dock. You, your mom, and your brother met us there because I wanted to make sure you all saw it with your own eyes before because, you know, they came, the police came, the defense force came, everybody came to get, uh, we, we're confiscating the stuff. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, why are you confiscating the stuff? Well, anything I find in the ocean is mine. That's, I know that's a law. <laughs> hey, if I find a treasure, it's mine. 
So of course, I was sitting there like, I was so prepared to get locked up, you don't know. Because the first thing I said was, this is the name of my lawyer. Uh, I found out later that he was a lawyer, so I was like, I think he's gonna come help me. So. Um, well, yeah, the, the, it's a crash. So the crash is obviously, it comes under the authority of the authorities. And they know they didn't do what they were supposed to do. Right. I, I, you know, no cutting around the corners and playing games. So five months later, do you think that anything has changed, no, or they're do, doing anything? You know, you 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 read the comment, you read the the newspaper, and you hear all oh, they're searching and looking around the area. But like you know, the evidence strongly suggests that the plane went over the ledge and it's submerged in the ocean. I was gonna say. And you know, it's just stupid to come to the public and say we're looking in. Andrus, when all evidence strongly suggests the plane is submerged in the water. And I have to ask you a really, really difficult question. But right now, at this moment, when we took you on the boat and we showed you the edge of the ocean and where the tracks, and we brought in a deep sea dri diver so you could see uh, where the plane went over the edge, 10,000 feet, where do you think your brother is? I. I, I, I think my brother is still in the plane. You think he's there? Because I know that yeah, others think he that he's on the island or he jumped out the plane. And, and you know, I can tell you my brother is a professional. And when they train and simulate for a crash, they train to strap in. Right. And so he knew he was in danger. So I'm pretty sure, pretty certain, he was strapping in because he knew he was going to crash or he had to crash land. And, you know, the impact knock him out laying under the water, I don't think he had a chance to get out. Do you think that that night, if they would have gotten a plane, what do you think? I don't know. Um, that's just it. You know, um, the window of opportunity was there um, to intervene. The possibility existed that he could have been unconscious and, you know, you could have rescued him. He might have been dead on impact. You know, I mean, there are so but many things. But you would things. have been able to see. Yep, absolutely. That's the closure. Yes. What, you yes. know, we, 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 we don't have the yeah. closure just to know what happened, you know. <sighs> but yeah, it's a, it's a it's tough difficult. story. Yeah. And um, I, 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 I think that at least in this uh, difficult situation, I'm glad to know that I got to uh, become friends with this wonderful family. Let me explain to you something. This, is, this family is, it, it, I didn't expect you know, the professionals in this family, the educated, I didn't know, it is crazy. And it's so sad that it, and if, if it happened to anybody, anybody's child, anybody's husband, anybody's brother. And um, I, once again, you know, I'm, I, you're always on my, in my thoughts, all the entire family. I, I text Anya often to check on her, Anya mom, and I want you to know that, you know, uh, it's, it's so bad that this happened. I appreciate you coming. Now on the show to let everybody know and listen the show is going to keep going and we're going to keep the story alive that's what's important and we're going to let um, our uh, officials know that we're not tolerating this and something needs to happen and you know what anybody who wants to come on the show to tell me what you're doing to fix it and so this doesn't happen again feel free to call us absolutely you know because I'd like, love to know uh, so thanks for watching and DJ thank you so much for coming thank I appreciate you, it Gina. love thank you, you. No Filter is brought to you by Oasis Shopping Bahamas, Bank of the Bahamas, Quality Home Center, Dairy Queen, Chef Boyardee, Boss, BAF Financial and Insurance, Checkers Cafe, Doctors Hospital, Marathon Vet Clinic, Mesa Grill, Live to Fish, Lowe's Pharmacy, Riley Boys Auto and Car Rental, and the Pediatric Place. Hey DQ fans, everyone knows DQ has the best sweet treats, but we also have delicious and affordable food options too. Presenting the DQ $7 Fan Meal. For just $7, choose from one of three delicious oven hot sandwiches, chicken bacon ranch, grilled chicken, or turkey BLT. Plus enjoy a DQ sundae, a soda and a chip, all for just $7. This is one ridiculous deal you don't want to miss. DQ, it's fan food, not fast food. I'm bringing fish home to daddy. Where's the smallest fish? Why, Paisy? This is heavy.
Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's my fish. Drop, drop it back. Why you want to catch a fish today? Another one, baby? Another one. We already found some fish, but we're going to find some more. Plan the best day of your life today. Check us out at www.live2.fish or on Facebook, Instagram, and TripAdvisor. Email us at info at live2.fish. This segment is brought to you by Dairy Queen. Fan food, not fast food. Hi, welcome back to No Filter with Gina. And my guest for the day is my best friend, Rondi Trico. Hi, Rondi. Hi, Gina. Thanks for coming. Thanks for having me. Oh, that's my girl. So first of all, I want to let you know, you know that No Filter show, she's the one who's singing that, not me. I know. Sounds like me, right? <laughs> so uh, first of all, I want to let you know that she's here to represent our head no segment because she's also another admin. You know, like I say, there's 12 of us. I call us the jury. Um, and I wasn't quite sure if there's actually 12 in a jury, but that's, that's what I always say. Yeah, 9 and 14, I think. 9 yeah. for regular, 14 for murders. No, we're wrong. 9 and 12. Nine okay, and 9 12. and 12. Thank okay. you. See, we have a lawyer in the house. So, Rondi, uh, first of all, I'd like to know, how did you become an admin of head no's? Okay, so after the hurricane relief and we noticed that the group was getting so large, we had to get additional people involved so that we could, you know, be effective or remain effective. So when the group was created, I, I just ended up becoming the admin because I started off as the logistics person when the actual hurricane relief was going we on. first started, before right. there was admins. Correct. Before there was any of that, there was just a website where for the most part, it was a lot of women that came to ask questions, you know, where can I get the best steak? Where could I find somebody who, you know, can interior clean my car for the best? So just it was more suggestions and, you know, just helping out your fellow man. And then when the hurricane happened, everything swung into overdrive and it turned into hurricane relief. We had to create a whole new page. But my whole thing, how I got involved with Head Nose from the beginning, Gina is my best friend and she was sick. And she said she had to get some help with trying to get her niece. And it was very emotional at the time. And she got sick and she couldn't be everywhere going, going, that going. she needed to be. So she asked me if I could come down and assist at the warehouse. So when I got to the warehouse, I went in overdrive because I'm a logistics person. So I said, let me hurry it up. Let me, you know figure out, okay, how do we get everybody in here? How do we have the organization? So then we started with the stations. We came up with the orientation so people would know, are you a wear? Are you a sorter? Are you, uh, are you, are you, are you muscle? Because we had muscle too, <laughs> the people that had to lift everything. And then it just became a flow where, you know, everybody had a purpose. Everybody knew what to do. We had the islands labeled inside of furniture. I mean, we literally took over Furniture Plus. But we had a method and, and we, we created some Something that worked and that's really how I think I ended up being well I think I was gonna be admin regardless because she's my best friend <laughs> and whatever she needs I do anyway um, now but that's, that that's, was official I, I think that the the thing that I remember most when it comes to Rondi down to the warehouse with all these volunteers you know they, they they're, they're, they're all night all day killing themselves sweating there's no air condition and she was like she sings as you will as I told you she was the motivator and the little um, jumping beat around everything so one day someone donated this costume which was a lion costume it looked like off of the lion king or something yeah. so all we know is when rondi buses out and she's wearing this all in all in one pajama costume and i was like and she put on a whole broadway show for everybody it was pretty phenomenal i'm gonna show those pictures and shame you oh thank you <laughs> yeah. 
Well, you know, I mean, when you're doing stuff like that, you want to keep people motivated. They're there. They're, they're, they're giving up their time. Some of them are coming straight from work and coming to help. So you want to make sure that you keep them going. And somebody came to me with the costume and was like, I don't know where to put this. This is Where do I sort this? Where do I put exactly. this? I said, it is October. Some young child is going to love this costume and enjoy themselves. When they don't have no water, no electricity, they got this costume. They're going to make fun. Let me show you how. Yeah, there you and go. I put on the costume. But I came out and I roared and I roared <laughs> and it was awesome and you know everybody had fun so that was the whole point now as an admin what do you think is the best part well you get so much done there's so much people the networking that you have is just amazing and just being able to you know communicate with all these facets of people I think that's great what is the worst some people are newbies and they don't really know the rules. And it's simple because all the rules are at the top of the page. But a lot of people just find these groups that have a lot of people to you know, push their own agendas out. And unfortunately, or fortunately, however you look at it, we have our own agenda. So if you don't follow that, then you know, it kind of takes away from who we are and what we're trying to be. So I think that's the most frustrating part when people un don't understand and they do their own thing and then they retaliate. And when they come back, it's like, Oh, okay, I'm sorry. I, I should have read the rules. So Okay, so I have a lot to say in a little bit of time with Rondi, but I want to bring but is, Rondi is the purpose. And I'm talking about Byron Ferguson, the pilot, who went down almost six months ago. And uh, Rondi, I want to just let the country know exactly how that, that happened. Okay, so when I found out what happened, um, my first instinct was I need Andrew because Andrew's my husband. Andrew is Gina's husband and Andrew is such a dynamic person on the waters. Like I've never seen anybody, he could look at what birds are flying and tell you what type of fish are there. So when it happened, I was like, let me get Andrew. So I went to Andrew and I was like, dude, I need your help. A really good friend of mine just went down on a plane and I know he's out there. I know, you know, who he is. He just has all of this inside of him. He's not just gonna, go like that so I need you I need you to go out and he's like man Rondi the boat's on dry dock so the tears started falling from my eyes and I guess he saw how you know passionate I was about it and the next day the boat came out of dry dock and he talked to G well I came by the house and I was talking to him about it and Gina was like what's going on and I was like well my friend went on the plane I know y'all could go out and I know y'all could find this plane so please 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 and the next day they went out and 20 minutes later I mean I remember Gina calling me on the phone don't tell nobody but we just found a piece of the plane and I was like I knew it I knew it everything inside of me knew Andrew would find this plane so that's really how you know I guess how you got involved but you know he is a dear friend of mine um, he he helped me to bring out my confidence with my music because I wasn't a studio girl I'm a live singer I like to do live music but everybody was like go in the studio do this and people call him the bridge so that's a nickname that Byron had and he was that for me you know he mm -hmm. he, he he bridged a gap for me to be comfortable and confident enough to go in the studio and he fixed my music right up. So that's just another one of his talents, and that's how we got very close. Even though we went to school together, his brother Bjorn was in class with my sister. So we've always been close. They live in Johnson Road. We grew up in Johnson Road. We were always in the area. We were always around, you know. Very, and it was very a very close-knit type of community. And, you know, their family are very, you know, prestigious. And, you know, our families were always close. So it, it was just very heartbreaking for me and just knowing the, having the confidence in Andrew and knowing who you are to make sure that the world knows and the world supports, you know, us trying to Yeah, so just help. letting you know, I did not, I never met Byron. I only knew Byron when Rondi called his name at first and she asked me to go and this is what happened and we picked up and going and, you know, thank God. I mean, like, I, I always say it's, it's because of Rondi that it actually all came into place. It's amazing, it's all, it literally who you know, and thank God that you have relationships and you love each other, and now the Ferguson family, it's very, uh, they're, they're dear to me. They feel like my family, they feel like I knew them forever. And um, so I just like to thank you, Rondi, for coming, for visiting, for representing and all of that. And um, you know, I love you. I love you and thanks too. for singing my song. All right, see you in a bit.
The Met will be hosting its annual ball, and we are going to rob it. Maybe you just need someone watching your back. Like a partner. Welcome back, everybody, to No Filter. And I want to let you know one more thing before we go. You know I have to do my little vent of what happened in my life because people don't believe about the stories that actually happen. So I was sent to a doctor from my national insurance to ver do a verification of something, right, for, N for NIB. Got had an appointment for 3 p.m. yesterday, no lie, okay? And got in the office at quarter to 3 Signed my little paper that I'm here on time. Thank goodness I was blessed that a good friend of mine happened to be coming to see the doctor at 3.15. 15 minutes from me. So we were sitting there talking, talking, talking. And two hours later, still sitting in the waiting room. So, you know, I started getting very agitated and we were already talked out. What else can we catch up on? And so they called my name, Gina Knowles, finally, went into the room. They stuck me in this room. Well, first of all, take your weight, take your height, take your blood pressure. And they stuck me in this room for about 20, 25 minutes. So then I was sitting there. So now we're on two and a half hours, right? So I said, you know, you sit there and you say, why do we have appointments if we have to wait for three hours? So I got up to leave. Because I was like, this is over. So my friend, who is an older lady, just by the way, a senior, experienced, and wise lady, she said to me, Gina, you've already committed two and a half hours of your life. So let's think about this reasonably and rationally. Because I started getting very, very agitated and loud. And she said, why don't you just wait? But so anyway... The thing is, I'm still trying to, can a doctor explain to me why you go and you schedule people 15 minutes apart, but yet you see us for half an hour to 45 minutes. Is it just greed? Is it that I don't have any respect? Do you think you're a god? Or do you think you're better than us? Now, I do have doctors, friends, when I go in, boom, walk in the door. If you're going to carry on a practice like that, she you just have a walk in because it makes no sense. You are making money. We are losing money. And I, I just, listen, that really put me over the top when it comes to unprofessionalism. You don't care attitude. We got to get past this. And anybody who has a friend who's a doctor, please tag them and say, I hope you don't do this. Because believe it or not, patients are customers. Right? So, I mean, that's a whole next story about customer service in this country. We're going to, I'm going to bring on somebody to talk about customer service in this country. But in the meantime... And in between time, Game of Thrones is exciting and it's making, keeping me happy. <laughs> so I'm really waiting to see what's going to happen next. And I'm trying not to talk about what happened because we have people like my husband who does not get to watch it up to date because he goes to sleep at 7 o'clock. So sometimes he doesn't watch it until five days later. So I can't spoil it for him. And, then, you know, he's going to watch my show because if not, I may put him at the house or something. I don't know. But anyway, I hope everybody has a great day. Happy Wednesday, and see you later. Bye. Promotional consideration provided by Oasis Shopping and Quality Home Center. <laughs>